is the new Raspberry Pi 5 and it's uh, 8 gigs of RAM and I received it uh, just uh, like this I didn't receive any cable uh, at all so today I'm gonna show you how to launch it and uh, build the image uh, onto it without the official uh, uh, power supply unit so I will use uh, this supply unit from a MacBook that I had uh, for my Mac, MacBook Air, and uh, I will use um, SD card, 64 gigs of space. I will use uh, this USB key to put the the card inside. Note that you can use uh, as well um, a USB key to put the to boot the OS. Make sure that the, uh, the USB key is at least 16 gigs uh, of space available. So right now I'm gonna plug this and this and put it in the computer. So I'm plugging in the SD card right here. So now it is plugged in. And next step is on computer. Download the official Raspberry Pi Imager. So you go to the Raspberry Pi website right here. I will put it in the description below. And you go to the software section and you download uh, the Imager. So I already done it. I have already done it. So I will just open the Imager. And at this point, make sure you have your USB uh, plugged in. I will choose my device. So we have a Raspberry Pi 5. So I choose this. For the operating system, I will choose the Rice Raspberry Pi OS, which is uh, the default one. And it is 64 bit. For storage, I will choose uh, my uh, USB key that I've just plugged in. I enter next. And now, since I don't have any monitor or HDMI uh, cable, I will uh, launch headlessly my I will launch headlessly my uh, Raspberry Pi. So I will hit Edit Settings. I will try to to launch um, to set my host name so i will put rp my username will be lewis louis rp i put a password and here you enter in a uh, in your to configure your wi-fi you you can configure uh, your uh, name of the wi-fi so here it's mine and you can enter the password Make sure to select your country code, which is the good one. And uh, it can be, it can make mistakes if you don't put the right one. So make sure you put the right one. Under services, enable SSH and use password authentication. So make sure to remember your username and password here. And then we are finished. You can hit save yes to apply this os customization so make sure you don't have anything on your usb uh, on your card or otherwise it will be erased it asks me for a password so i will put my admin password and now it is writing the usb card so i will skip this part and we meet again when it's done verification is ending so as you can see it is now uh, written on the sd card so right now you could you should see your uh, usb your sd card here so I don't, so I will just unplug and replug. 
and as I explained you in the in the beginning of the video, I don't have the official power supply unit, so that's why I don't have this. So this has a real precise specification, and if you don't have this one, there is a little uh, manipulation to do. So it is uh, explained in the documentation. So you have to uh, write uh, this in the configure file of the USB key. So let's find uh, the SD card and uh, write this in the, so I will copy this and let's find the config file in the SD card that we, that we have just uh, made bootable. So I open it, uh, we have config.txt, I open it as well. And at the end, I will add just a comment for me to remember later user PSU and I will paste my uh, command and my indication so I save the file I can close okay and right now it should be okay to launch it with our other PSU so the next step is to remove the SD card so make sure you have ejected it uh, right before otherwise it will cause uh, problems so you eject it and you can remove the card and now I will put it right under so here now that it's inside and now that it that it, that it is inside, I will just put the power and you will see the light will blink. So I have just plugged in the power, so the light is going green. And it will start to blink and it means that the SD card is uh, being uh, readed by the Raspberry Pi. And the next step will be on our computer to connect remotely to the Raspberry Pi OS uh, via SSH first and after via remote desk desk desktop control. We'll try to log uh, to our Raspberry Pi in order to uh, launch it. Since we don't have a monitor, we will do it by SSH. So we need first open a terminal. So we open a terminal, I will make this bigger and then uh, we need to remote via the command ssh the username the, at the IP address. So we don't have the IP address so that's why we will try to find it. I am using the AP scanner app so you can launch it, our Raspberry Pi, so I will copy the IPv4 address and I will go back to my terminal and I will paste it and now it should be okay so it will ask for my username password so that's why you should remember it at first so I enter my password and here we go boom and then we are in we can see that we are inside the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> we can see the configurations, so it's it's very cool. But what we want now is to have the graphical user interface and see uh, what to do to enable VNC server on the Raspberry Pi via command line. So I will copy and paste this and here we are there so I will go to interface options I will hit enter VNC would you like to enable VNC yes and it's generating keys and then the server is enabled so now we can just go to finish 
and I will reboot my uh, Raspberry Pi. So sudo uh, different client utilities. So they uh, they can use you can use Tiger VNC. You can use VNC Viewer. So I will use VNC Viewer. You can download it on your computer on this website. I will put it in the description below. And I have already done it, so I will just show you. So you are here on Real VNC Viewer, and you enter the server address. So that was that is what we uh, entered at first. So rp dot local for me, maybe different for you. And it will just try to connect. It may take a bit of time so it may not be safe but continue so here you put your username and password you can remember password I will do it if you want okay and boom here we are we are on the uh, Raspberry Pi so you can see that we have Bluetooth enable we have Wi-Fi and we have the utilities <coughs> okay so that's very cool and you have different accessories or application as you want so that's the end of the video i hope you liked it hope it was useful and don't hesitate to subscribe or like the video and comment. I will try to answer you. Thank you. Goodbye.